YouTubers, what is up? Scott Devan here from Scott's Bass Lessons coming back at you and today we're going to be looking at a ridiculously cool bass lick. And the reason why I want to outline this lick and hopefully you guys are going to learn it with me is that it utilizes a super super special note, a note that I use all the time but see people missing out on the opportunity and without using that note your lines are not going to end in the right place. You're going to end at a weak point in the bar and we're going to get into that in this lesson and it's going to throw you out of sync with everything harmonically speaking right and also you can use this note in walking lines, in grooves, in soloing and so much more so it's really important that you understand how to use it and why to use it as well. So let's get into it in this lesson. But before we even get there, let's head over to the theory corner so I can explain the science behind this special note. Okay guys, so welcome to the theory corner. By the way, I've got to ask you, do you guys like this kind of format? We're messing around with a new style of video. If you guys let me know in the comments what you think of this style of lesson here on YouTube, that would be pucker. Okay, so the theory corner. So first of all, to understand the science behind this, we really need to know what we do as bass players. So number one, what do bass players do? What do we do? We, check this out. Oh yeah, I love doing that. It's the first time I've done that, so I don't know. I can't really say I love doing that, but I did love doing it. But anyway, what do we do as bass players? We outline the chords, okay? So in this lesson, we're going to be focusing on the tonality of D dominant seven, okay? The D seven chord. And it's really important to understand that, you know, keys players, keyboard players, what do they do in the band? They outline the chords. What do guitar players do? They outline the chords. What do bass players do? The other part of the rhythm section, we outline the chords. So that is, is our job within the band. Obviously, we, you know, we're grooving, but that is what our groove is doing. It's outlining the chord for the audience. So, but what do we use to outline the chord? So first of all, the obvious, we use chord tones. We want to outline the chord, we use chord tones. Boom, it sounds simple, doesn't it? It is simple. So we're talking about the tonality of D dominant seven and the notes that we can use to outline the D dominant seven chord are D, F sharp, A and C. They're called the chord tones. If you play them in this order, D, F sharp, A, C, you're going to get a D7 arpeggio. So if you've ever heard anybody saying an arpeggio, an arpeggio is just the notes of the chord, okay? The chord being D7, okay? But obviously we've only got four notes in this, you know, this scenario. What happens if we want to expand on that? What happens if we feel limited by just using that those four notes? Which, you know, you could do. So in that instance, how do we expand? We use the chord. <laughs> I stumbled there. We use the chord scale, okay? Now the chord scale is D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C. This is actually called a D mixolydian mode, okay? So if you've ever heard somebody saying about the modes, okay, the modes, the mode is just the perfect scale for the chord. So we've got the chord that we're creating a groove over, okay? We're using chord tones to do that, okay? But we want to expand a little bit and therefore we're going to use the chord scale, the D mixolydian mode. So every time you hear mode, just think, okay, it's the perfect scale for a chord. It's up to us to learn what mode you know, corresponds with what type of chord. And then finally, the magic note, the note that today is all about. Are, are you excited about it? Gav, are you excited about it? I can't contain myself. Oh, he can't contain himself. Anyway, the magic note, the magic note is the sharp five, okay? G sharp in this instance. So we've taken a D mixolydian mode or scale or chord scale, whatever you want to call it, and we've added in one more note. Look at this. We've got seven notes here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But why the heck would we even want to add in a note to the Mixolydian note? Is this not enough notes? No, it isn't enough notes. Let me grab my bass and I'll show you exactly why. So the reason why we'd want to use a sharp five and a descending bass line or run is so that we land on a harmonically strong beat at the correct point of the measure. So to understand this thoroughly, and I'm going to play this so you can check this out, it's really cool if you understand that beats one and three of the bar, there we go, beats one and three are the harmonically strong beats, beats two and four are the harmonically weak beats. That doesn't mean that we should stay away from beats two and four, it just means that on beats two and four we can use chromatic notes a little bit more to create that forward propulsion in the line than we can do on beats one and three and that's why in a walking bass line you really be want to be hitting those key you know chord tones on beats one and three because for the human ear that really spells out the chord the sound of the chord for us where on beats two and four we can use that forward propulsion and those cool chromatic notes. Now to show you this in action, I'm going to play down a D mixolydian scale. I'm not going to add anything in, I'm just going to play it verbatim, okay? And you're going to see that if I don't add in that sharp five, I'm going to be landing on weak beats at the wrong time. So check this out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now let me break that down for you. As I'm descending down the D-Mixolydian scale there, if I count along, one, two, three, four, one, I'm actually hitting a G, which is the fourth of the D-Mixolydian scale on the beat one, okay? We don't want to be hitting the 11th on beat one, okay? We want to be hitting the third or the fifth or the root, whatever, but not the fourth, right? So let me do that again. One, two, three, four, one. Let's carry on. Two, three, four. So again, I've just hit a D there on beat four, right? What happens on beat one? Are we gonna go down here? So let's add in the sharp five and you'll see how everything starts to line up perfectly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and again. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, as you could see there, it's a completely different game, right? One, two, three, four, one. We're hitting the fifth of the chord on beat one, two, three, four, one. So it lines up everything perfectly so it fits harmonically within the measure. Boom, that's what we want. So as you can see there, if you add in the sharp five, it lines everything up perfectly so we land on the right beats at the right time within the measure. And people have been doing this for years. If you look at some of the jazz players in the 50s, they would started using bebop scales for the exact same reason. So they could play a line and hit the right note at the right time within the measure. So now we understand the science behind what's going on, let's jump into the lick so you guys can get this under your fingers and into your toolkit. It's a bit of a beast, so take your time, let's get into it. So for the lick we're going to be keeping in the tonality of D7. As I said earlier, we're going to be using chord tones, we're going to be using the mode, and we're also going to be using the sharp five as a passing note because it is super cool and lines everything up perfectly and gives us that whole chromatic vibe to the line that I absolutely love. So let's hear the lick super slow and then we're going to break it down piece by piece. <laughs> So let's break this down into bite-sized chunks so you've got a chance of digesting this and getting it under your finger, okay? So the first part of the run has got this, what I call a little switcheroo between the third and the fourth finger. Now if you look carefully, I start with the little finger there, the pinky, fourth, third, index, but then the A here is then 
played mm. by the pinky again. So first that A is played by the third finger, then the pinky. And the reason why I'm doing that little switcheroo is because I need to be able to stretch over here to do so, right? So check it out. Okay. So that for me is the first part of the line that you want to focus on. Now once you've got that part down, then that's the leap over to that sharp five, our magic note, right? And then you slide back down again using that pinky to the five. Then with the second finger, hit the root. With the third finger, the fourth root. Stretch over that first finger, minor third, and then slide into that the major third there. That to the minor third to the major third is a really, really common thing that you'll hear all the time. Here we go again. Now when you hit this D here with the pinky, the whole thing starts again. Let's break that down again. So that last bit is just you hit the B, go up to the C, hit that top C, and then once you hit that top C, you do this cool thing. Check this out. Okay, and again, this is from the Mixolydian scale, really. We're going to the flat seven there, down to the 13 or the six, minor third, which we're taking that from the blue scale, root, fourth, major third, okay? Now, let's play the entire thing at 50 BPM so you can hear it super slow. Okay, so now we've got the groove under our fingers. All we need to do is start playing it with an actual groove because that's the way that we're fully going to absorb this vibe into our playing by putting it into practice, right? So the groove that I'm using is from the Groove Trainer within scottsbassessons.com within the membership. So if you remember, go check that out and you can use this exact same groove. If you're not part of Scott's Bass Essence, I'm sure you can find stuff on YouTube, but you know, do me a solid one. Go check out scottsbassessons.com and sign up for one of the trials that we've got over there because it is badass. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you enjoyed this lesson guys and also let me know about the for this format of lesson do you like it do you not like it what do you think let me know in the comments all of your feedback is welcome and make sure you subscribe to the channel so every time I upload a lesson you get notified and make sure you have the notifications switched on and finally if you've not been to scottsbasslessons.com Go and grab a 14-day free trial over there. We are the ultimate online bass school for bass players such as yourself because you get access to the largest online uh, course library for bass players on the planet featuring some of the best bass educators on the planet. 
and I'm in there too. We also do live streams every single week so you can interact with our faculty in real time and it really is a completely new opportunity for bass players such as yourselves to you know get a really a world-class bass education from the comfort of your own home and you can join for uh, it's super cheap <laughs> anyway go grab your 14-day free trial over scottspacesessons.com and hopefully I'll see you over there now without further ado as always take it easy and I'll see you in the shed <laughs>